Hello everyone. Welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Today you could use crumbs, leftover quilt block, back quarter, little piece of fabric, whatever you've got, because you know what we have? We have kids going back to school and what do they need? They need pencil cases. Check these out. Nice zipper, nice roomy compartment, nice little handle. And this one, I haven't closed up my inner piece, as you see. But the one we are going to do together is all closed up, I promise. Now, uh, I think that you could get two of these out of a fat quarter. So they're definitely cheap to sew but i thought they would be really cute if you took like some crumbs of fabric and just sewed them together and then cut the pieces out okay uh it's going to be cute any way you go but you know whether it's your children your grandchildren your nieces your nephews your neighbor's children school's going back in session summer's over and we'll get these kids something that's bright and cheerful and homemade. And for any of you who are new to zippers, this is a very easy zipper. And you know I would not tell you stories, right? So if you have done the uh, zippered coin purse with me, if you've done that, this is just as simple if that as that if not easier and look how nice that looks nice and flat across there beautiful looking zipper you can do it too okay so you guys are gonna get busy with me today with these we're going to use some fusible interfacing and fusible fleece Although if you have a heavyweight fusible fleece, you could just straight up use that. I'm going to leave everything in the description box below. If you can't find the description box, it is a little bit different depending on what device you're on, whether you're on an iPad, iPhone, uh, Android device, or a computer. But usually where it says the video name, like this would say, you know, pencil case or something, over to the right, you're going to see a little, what looks like a V. It's a little down arrow. And if you click that, you'll see the description box. And then sometimes you'll start to see the words and it will say, see more. And if you click that, you'll see the description box. And what I have been trying to do to help you guys out is as soon as the video goes up, I try to remember to copy out of the description box and pin it to the top comment so it's there as well it's in two places so trying my best all right guys let's go make some pencil cases practice our zippers give yourself a pat on the back because this one you're gonna ace it okay let's go give it a shot we are going to take a look at what we need so you're going to need a zipper now mine is plenty long enough. <laughs> I'm going to be cutting some off, but I would say that you would want at least a 14 inch zipper for this. You don't want to be too short because it makes it hard to work with when the zippers are too short. So this is for your exterior. You're going to need two pieces and these pieces measure 12 by five. So they're both 12 by five. And then you need two pieces of the lining. And these are also 12 by 5. Pretty easy and straightforward so far, right? And then you need one piece that's eight, eight and a half inches. What did I cut mine at? That's eight and a half, but anywhere in the ballpark, eight and a half by two and a half. All right? So four pieces, two for your outer, two for your lining, 12 by five, one piece, eight and a half by two and a half, your zipper. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to do it right here with you, 
is I used some interfacing. Now, if you have some pretty solid fusible fleece, one layer would do it. I'm going to use this Pelon 987 on the outer pieces. Okay, so the 987, which is basically a thinner fusible fleece, that's going on those. And then I have some SF-101, and I cut that to go on my lining because I want the pencil case to be solid. I want it to have some firmness and stand up. You know, nobody wants it to be just, you know, crumbly, all soft. Anyway, you want it to kind of stand up. So I cut these very close to 12 by 5. I cut them about just under a quarter of an inch shorter so that it would just barely fit under my fabric and I didn't have to worry about it getting stuck to my iron or my ironing mat. And I'm using a very hot heat and I have steam as you can see. I think that that helps everything work better. I think all that glue works much better that way. So just in case you've never done the fusible fleece before, there are two sides to it. It sticks to my hands because my hands are so dry. Anyway, there is a glue side and I know you can't see it, but you can feel it. So you're going to put the glue side down against the wrong side of, of your outer fabrics. And just fix that so there's you don't see any white peeking out around there because you don't want glue on your iron. And we're just going to give that a good press with some steam. And the steam really does help the glue, I think. Even on uh, fusibles that don't say to use steam, I tend to use steam because I've had trouble with these things not sticking before. So. Or if, if you want, you could uh, use a spray bottle as well and just dampen it a little bit. I'm going to give that one just another press of heat. And I thought this fabric would be adorable for a pencil case, the crayons. <laughs> and I chose the green zipper. Um, I could have gone orange or yellow, but. I don't know, I kind of like that green. That's just me. Right, now we're going to fuse to the wrong side of our lining, and this is with the SF-101. Now prep them both, and there again, you've got a glue side and a, and a non-glue side, so just make sure you get the correct side down. You don't want it sticking to your ironing board. That wouldn't help, now would it? <laughs> These are really quick to sew. And, you know, if you have scraps of fabric, like I was thinking, I have scraps of Minecraft and Spider Man and all this and that. And, you know, the kids are going to love that stuff. The kids are going to love that stuff. All right. The only thing I'm going to do while the iron is still here is I'm going to press this. And all we're going to do is what we would normally do for any type of strap or handle. You fold it in half. And then when you open it up, which I always have trouble with, <laughs> you're going to fold that into the center. We're going to press. And I still like to use steam here. Um, 
it helps make a better crease. Then fold your other side into the middle. Just like that, give it a good burst of steam. And then from the other side. And let the clapper absorb that, give it a good crease. Then when we sew it, everything will be held right where it should be. Okay, next part. This is like the simplest thing that, really, this is so easy to make. Okay, I misplaced my little one inch ruler. <laughs> so we're going to go in the corners and we're going to measure one inch from the edges on all four of each piece, the lining, and the exterior. Okay, I have marked all of them the same. They all have one inch squares in the corner. So now I'm going to cut those and I won't bore you with all of the cutting, but that's what's next right there. So cut all of your corners. I have these all cut, which didn't take very long. So now we're ready to go. We're ready to sew. Go sew. <laughs> now, if of course, if you have a directional fabric, you're going to want to pay attention to that. I do not. You're going to take your nylon zipper, and you're going to place it right side down. So that's zipper side down. And I leave myself a little bit of space over to the side. A little bit of space to work with. I've been handling the zipper, now it's all rippled. Okay, so your fabric is right side up. Your zipper is right side down. So that means that this fabric is right side down because see you want your right sides facing with your zipper sandwiched in between so you're going to line everything up okay you want it level here and you want these even in the back so i get my first pin in there to hold it i might go back and adjust but i always grab one to kind of just set it into place there because usually it knows after that where it needs to go. I bet you didn't know that, that fabric just knows where it needs to go. <laughs> it does seem that way though sometimes, doesn't it? That once you've got something in place, it seems like it knows it belongs there or something. Uh, I already have the zipper foot on my sewing machine and I'm going to use just a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to sew across all the way, one side to the other, and I'll meet you right back here. All right. So as you can see, I just sewed across there. I'm going to open it up. And I always like to press this. I like the results I get more when I press than when I do not. And if you're not a presser, that's fine. I will say, if you do press this, please be careful around these zippers because they will not take a lot of heat. I just like it to the fabric to lay down where I need it to be. 
I went looking through my fabrics for this and you know you can get two of these out of one fat quarter so that's a good thing and of course you know you can work with scraps a lot of times I have pieces 12 by 5 I could find two pieces of the same fabric that were 12 by 5 okay uh, we're gonna take this over and top stitch this so I'm going to hold these fabrics down where they need to be and I'm going to top stitch all right it is top stitched I'll take my pins out and the top stitching always makes it look so much neater. Uh, probably hard for you to see, but anyway, there is a line of top stitching there. Okay, so now we have the zipper is right side up, the fabric is right side up. We're going to take our next outer, or, yeah, outer fabric, and we're going to place it down. We're going to line it up with the sides even and with the top even. And I'm only going to give it a couple of pins because I need to get uh, the lining in under there. But I always like to pin one up and get it in place a little bit, just a few pins. Hold it in place. Your lining is right side up. And then we're placing this down over top of it. And we're again going to line the sides and the top. You know, if you're a little bit off, it's it's not going to hurt because when you put it together, it will all work out. But try to get it as close as you can. And you know, if you're still new to zippers, really this is a very good project because of how neatly the zipper it just sits in place really well in this pattern without a lot of work on your part. As long as you line your zipper up along here and you have it fairly even with the sides, your pencil case is going to be perfect. So I don't want you to worry if you're not an expert on zippers. Uh, this is a really easy zipper project. Okay, so again, I'm going to take my zipper foot and I'm going to stitch along here using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Okay, we're gonna open this up and again, I'm going to press And as I said earlier, I wanted to just make it clear what I meant. I used two different. Um, I used a fusible fleece and a fusible interfacing. And if you had something thicker like the, what is it, uh, 973, the Pelon 973, and you had that on here, you would not need the SF-101. You could get by with one or the other. And of course, depending on how you want your pencil case, Maybe you don't want the SF-101 in there. I just wanted it to be uh, kind of stand up on its own, you know, have pretty firm sides. And I was trying out the different fusibles to see what I get. And I did like this one. I'll show you the other one, the first one here. And then you can see what I mean. Now this one, <clears throat> excuse me, I like the firmness of it. It's still squishable and soft, but it stands up on its own. You know, you, you don't, it's not just falling in on itself. And this is done exactly like this one with the 987 and the SF-101. Okay, so move your zipper over into here. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is come over here 
and I want you to stitch along this edge of your zipper here and here because we're going to cut this off and you don't want your zipper falling off. I mean, yes, you can get it put back on, but this end, sewing this end also helps when you put this together with your fabric. So we're just going to go back and forth here and there holding our zipper together. It's not going to show in the final product. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right, and I forgot to say that we were going to top stitch at the same time, but I bet you guys were one step ahead of me. So both of these, whoops, have been top stitched along here and there. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to use a pair of old scissors. You don't want to use your good ones, just a pair of old scissors and snip your excess zipper off. Excuse me. Take a drink of water and my, my throat is gurgling or something here. Before we go any further, the golden rule, open your zipper. Don't forget that because if you forget that, you're going to have to unpick it because it will not be good. Okay, now we're putting right side to right side and on the lining, right side to right side. Again, with the zipper open. So I'm going to pin this. You can use clips. You can always use clips. Use whatever you're comfortable with. See how I'm lining these up? That one pretty much went into place without me having to do anything. Now this side here, once you get your sides matched up, we're going to leave an opening here, all right? And that's when I put my pins in backwards as to what I normally do, okay? So that signals that I'm going to stop there. So I'm going to sew. I'm going to start here and I'm going to back tack and I'm going to sew to here and back tack. Here, here, excuse me, here, 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 and to there. Back tack. I will meet you right back here and I will show you what it should look like. All right, and in the interest of not editing mistakes, <laughs> I just made a mistake, and I'm going to show you what I did. And I know some of you were trying to go, stop, stop. <laughs> all right, let me clip all my threads here, and then I'll show you. See, I have this, and I forgot to put that in there. I was thinking how well we were going along, but you know, I tell you guys, I don't like to edit mistakes because I do make them. Everyone does. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want the end where my zipper pull is, which is this end, and I want the outer piece, the one with the crayon on it. And right in the middle is where that's going to go. But before I can put it there, I need to go stitch this. And that's probably where I made my mistake because I didn't uh, sew it when I normally would because I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll get to it in just a minute and I'll show them. Well, yeah, all good intentions. That's probably enough stitches there because I like to place it right in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to go stitch this, and I'll come right back. Okay, all stitched. I have blue thread, which is really close to the, the gray color. I had that underneath, so I'm thinking, hmm, should I leave that out? Hmm, I don't know. I think I'll just leave it like that since I top-stitched with black. 
But anyway, you're going to fold this in half and you're going to center it. And I center it on the side with the zipper pull where the, when the zipper is closed, that's where the pull is. Okay, and I usually do leave a little bit poking out there. Now I'm going to go back and stitch that across. Okay, all mistakes are fixed now. Right? I hope. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter where you start, but you're going to take your four corners all four okay we're going to do them all the same way just like matching a quilt block just like this you're going to nest your seams one one way one the next iron and pin or clip I love the way this SF101 gives the firmness <laughs> to that fabric. It makes it so easy to fold that in there. And again, nest your seams. So these are the outer ones. These are the ones that show, and you definitely want those ones done up nice, don't you? I know I would. So. And uh, I've had a lot of thought about these because you guys know I like to use a lot of lace and ribbon and rickrack and dress things up. So there's a lot that you could do with these because say you had some lace, you could lay some lace going along here. You could put rickrack. When you go to top stitch, you could lay your rickrack or your lace across there and stitch that down. You could applique something here. You could embroider the child's name. And you know, these would be great for knitting needles too, like the double pointed knitting needles. Of course, you'd have to go longer for the other size. But. All right. So now that just leaves you with this middle part. Okay. Now you see this thing. All right. And this is why we back tacked. You wouldn't want to do this if you hadn't, as well as you wouldn't want to leave that stitching the zipper part out because that's what's holding it together right now. So you're doing the same thing that you did here and here, but you line up this set, this with the center of the zipper and then deal with the next piece. Do the same thing. Just fold it where you need it to be, nesting everything together and then put a pin or a clip in it, whichever way you see best, because we're going to stitch across there. So again, the same thing here. Just laying that flat, opening this. See, that one went together. I didn't even uh, need to push it into place. It went right where it needed to be. So I've been using a quarter inch seam allowance this whole time, and this is no different. I'm going to stitch, stitch, stitch. Same thing here. Okay, we're gonna do that because we're almost done. Okay, now everything is stitched down. I do usually clean up anything that looks a little bit messy, like this where the zipper you could use pinking shears, but you know, nobody's going to see it once it's sewn in there. And I always backstitch. When I go across the zippers or anywhere, I go back and forth when I hit there. Okay, so now we're going to flip it right side out. Because all we need to do is close up this hole in the bottom. So I'm going to move my zipper. A little bit more.
Just poke your corners out. So now what we have to do is actually, we're going to flip it right back the other way, but I want you to see what it is here. So yeah, we need to shape it up a little bit, but this is what we have. And I think it's a nice looking pencil case and the zippers look so neat. So the only thing we have left to do is to sew up this hole. So I generally, as you know, I'm going to press it <laughs> because that's what I do. And you know, these bags, these could be made for so many different things, not just pencils. I was thinking, like I said earlier, knitting needles, but but really you could make them any length or width and they would be great for a lot of different things actually. I used to always hand sew these closed and now I don't get that picky. I'll tell you what I do is I take my zipper foot I always mark where I start. I take my zipper foot and I place it so that the needle is just skating along that edge. And I, I sew it close to there and I call it a day because I used to always hand stitch, but I don't anymore. I'm going to go close that up and I'll meet you right back here. All right, I'll trim up my threads. See, that's neat enough, I think. Makes a nice, neat seam. So there are no exposed seams in this. Everything is finished up. I've made them different ways. Um, I don't like an exposed seam in there. I've done it that way before. I wasn't completely uh, happy with it. So this is a much better way. Oops, I just poked that in there. <laughs> so what do you think? I think these are perfect for back to school. And they would be great done with scraps. Maybe you have two and a half inch wide strips. You could put them one way. You could use crumbs leftover quilt block and cut it up. There's so many different ways you could, could go with this. But as I said, you could get two of these out of a fat quarter. So, you know, if you run into a fat quarter sale or you've got a bunch at home, you know, and who doesn't have some pre-cuts usually, uh, that would be great. Uh, I apologize for forgetting the handle <laughs> on the first time through there. I got a little bit ahead of myself. But I think these look great. Our creative word of the day today is going to be pencil because these are called a pencil case, even though you could put anything you want in there. And uh, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today here at Marie's Scrappy Creations. Uh, don't forget this Wednesday, it's going to be a live stream What's Up Wednesday. I'm not sure what time I'll try to announce, but I, you know, it's so up in the air. It's really hard to pin down an exact time. So I appreciate your patience while I switch some things around with my channel, just trying to make things a bit easier. Uh, anyway, until next time, you take care, be safe, be kind out there. The world needs more of that. And I'll see you next time right here at Marie Scrappy Creations. Bye-bye.